Hi, I'm Stu, and welcome back to the channel. It's been a hot and roasty toasty minute since I last posted a video tutorial. And what better way to come back and to show you the new features available in LumaFusion version 5. If you wish to follow along, you can download the bungee jumper video clip via the link in the description. As always, let's get started. Okay, so to get into speed and reverse, press 2 on the keyboard or tap the little pencil icon. Now there's quite a few new things going on in here. For example, we now have a dynamic panel for your presets. You can see you can shrink them down or enlarge them up, stretch them out. We have a freeze frame in here, which we will look at in another video tutorial. And of course, we've got the ability to adjust the speed. The cool thing is, Rather than just being limited to six times, we can now go all the way up to 10 times speed. So creating those hyperlapses are going to be a little bit easier. One other thing I want to point out to you, we also have a zoom feature. If you tap on the little plus magnifying glass icon there, that highlights the whole of the preview panel. And from there, you can slide in using this little pop-out window and you can move around as well. slide it back down and once you're finished just tap on the little magnifier again and that vanishes for you and the thing we're all here for is the speed ramping so to get into that we're going to tap on this little graph icon here and see the speed value we will stretch out now you're obviously going to have to create some keyframes but the easiest way of learning the new speed ramping feature is to actually use four Presets. Here's the original video file. Then we have the bullet preset, the hero preset, the jump cut preset, and finally the montage preset. Okay, let's take a look more closely at how these work. So we've got our four second video clip here with no keyframes whatsoever. And then all we're gonna do is tap on bullet to start with. This generates three keyframes, and then you'll see these purple and green sliders below. When you get to the first keyframe, the purple slider doesn't actually work because there was nothing before it. You're only really concerned with the green slider. But when you get to the middle of the three keyframes, you'll see the purple slider now works because there's information in the actual keyframe before the second keyframe in the same way that if we move on to the third keyframe or in between the two you've got purple and green as you can see here we just play it through what it's effectively doing is starts off at four times speed slows down to half speed and then goes back to four times speed so if you wanted a more dramatic effect we can take our first keyframe and we can increase the speed to, let's say, six and a half times. And then we go to the last keyframe. And again, just nudge it up to six and a half times. And we'll leave the second keyframe at half speed. And then if we actually play through, you can see the actual effect being an awful, an awful lot more dramatic. And what we're effectively doing here in terms of navigating between this keyframe and this keyframe in terms of the graph is deciding how much easing is going on there. So we could actually increase that. And of course, in the actual slider information going to the left hand side, sort of slows things or eases things down and going to the right hand side just effectively gives a more dramatic entrance or speeds things up so we'll take it to where the preset kind of had it and you can see the overall effect and if we want to we can go to our exit point and maybe see slow it down even more and then how the ease is actually coming into the keyframe again we can increase the curve then if we go right back to the beginning, you 
can see it's now got a different vibe, different pace to it. So that's why I'm saying to you, tap on the actual presets prior rather than just dropping out keyframes and kind of getting a bit lost. It's much easier just to actually see the overall effect of the keyframe and then from there apply what you want to do with it. You want to reset everything, just double tap on speed and then remove all the keyframes. Okay, to do our own custom speed ramp, I've already set the speed of the clip to half speed and then from there I brought the timeline into the one second mark. I'm going to drop a keyframe. We're then going to move things along and let's say we come in at around about the two second mark, smack bang in the middle. This time we'll drop a new keyframe, although if we hadn't dropped a new keyframe, just by adjusting the speed itself, that would drop a keyframe for you. And I'm going to bring that to, let's say, seven times. And because on the first keyframe over here, there's nothing going on beforehand, hence why the purple is switched off and sort of dulled out, we can then decide what we're going to do with it. Now, if you aren't so sure, down here in the ease presets, you can see you've got slow in, constant in, fast in, slow out, constant out, fast out, and then hold out. So for example, we could do a fast in. Then if we move along to the second keyframe, where things get an awful lot faster, we want the, we want the easing still be probably a constant in. And then if we move things along to say around about the three second mark I reckon good as anything I can bring this back to half speed that drops down and then I can decide on an ease preset which could be constant out or it could be slow out whatever you want you can see the overall effect you're achieving and then if you're not so sure just come in tap on the keyframe if you want to move things about, just tap and hold on the keyframe itself. And then you can play with the positioning and then choose to adjust the sliders. But it just comes down to a little bit of, sort of having a play with it and seeing what you like and what you don't like. You can see that's a little bit slower at the beginning, but snappy at the back end. Here, go the opposite way, go the opposite way that way, play it up, play through. It's snappier at the beginning, slower at the back end of it. And there's also, I should mention, at the very, very end, a linear option. I'll show you what that does. And there we go. That's the kind of basics of the speed ramping. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but I found that just by tapping on the actual presets themselves, like so the jump cut and that, or the bullet, or even if you wanted to go a little bit more complicated, the montage, you can then work with these initially and find something that you like to play with. And then from there, if you want to save this out, can then create your own speed configuration and for example we could just call that montage 2 save it up and that then saves it into our own little collection if you're enjoying the tutorial don't forget to subscribe share and ring the bell to be notified when the next video is released it really does help the channel out if you have any questions feel free to drop them in the comments below and i hope you've enjoyed the first of many new video tutorials coming up soon See you later.